now. Me? It's Otome season. It sure is. Which by that I mean it's Otome season whenever you play an Otome game. Yeah. It's a very it's a variable season if you would like <laughs> to say. Ho ho. <laughs> That's Perfect. all I got. That's all I got. Finger guns. Finger guns. Hello, welcome to this week's episode of the Seasonal Anime Checkup OVA. It's a podcast where we have conversations about video games, anime, and manga. Hello, I'm Jared, joined as always by Doc Allen, and Ladium. Hello. This is episode number 273, and we're talking about some Otome this week. We are. We are talking about some Otome. I, for I... some reason, thought I was going to say today there instead of this week, then I realized like it wouldn't have mattered. It wouldn't have mattered. It's the same thing. I don't know why I like hesitate. Like uh, uh, d- this t- 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 this week. Uh, uh, uh. No, it's Jared. The same. Words are hard. Words are hard. So you're not wrong. Like, it's no big. Words are hard, man. You did your best, and that's all that matters. I tried my best. Mm-hmm. Um, you're gonna be talking about your 25th Otome game to go onto the the ranking. Oh my god, is it really? Tw- wow, it is 25. 25. Holy <laughs> As we are discussing Variable Barricade. And by we, I mean you're discussing Variable Barricade because I have not played it. <laughs> no, but you're going to listen and communicate with me about No, yes, yes, yes. But I, I didn't want to imply that I've also played it and give unreasonable expectations here. Oh, uh, okay, okay. This is not a code real life situation where you've also played good game. No. Um, that is not to say this is a good game, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, we'll 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 get into that. We we shall. But yeah, variable barricade. Bar- barricade is variable barricade. <laughs> so we're talking about variable barricade. Yes. It came out in February. I don't remember exactly when. February the. We're gonna, I'm gonna look it up real quick. Okay. And then I'll tell you. Man, February was... was a long month. It sure did. And this is, no, that's wrong. It should really say 2018. That's, no, that's not what I want. <laughs> no. No, no. <laughs> February 24th, 2022. That makes sense. Because um, I was surprised that they didn't try and do it for Valentine's Day, but they didn't get it out in time. Yeah, and also games don't really come out on Mondays. For the most part. Yeah. Fair. Um, so I'm going to tell you all I know about this game. Okay. You liked the art. The art's beautiful. Because we talked about that before it came out. Mm-hmm. Because you were excited the, about that. The art's beautiful. And then something happened with the ending and you were like, your 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 whole excitement and just overall feelings about the game just plummeted like it's crypto. Yes. That is exactly what happened. Oh man, I can I actually I know something else that you know about this game. Go on. Um, there's a dude who likes to be stepped on. Oh right, yeah, that guy. I just blocked him out of my mind because I was like, "That's I, I'm going to kink shame him." <laughs> I mean, you probably should kink shame him. You probably should. It's fair. Um, but yeah, that's the only that's the thing because I kept mentioning it to you quite a bit. Yes, that is true. That's the, I feel like that's the only dude I know in this game <laughs> is guy who wants to be stepped on. Yep. And then there's just other dudes there apparently. Yep, other dudes. They exist. They exist. Um, surprisingly, there are only four this time. Usually, there's more than four guys that you date. Yeah, that's that's a small number. You would you would say. It is. Did that coincide with the game also being like shorter? Because no. obviously you'd have less routes that it didn't? No. Huh. Interesting. Because, I mean, you had the true ending, too, and that one had... Well, yeah, but also, I mean, you have true endings in all those other games. Some of them, yeah. So, like, I didn't know if, like, they just, like, made this game shorter by comparison, or it's, like, the the routes are longer by comparison oh, that... since they're... There's one or a couple short, you might say. Well... There's um, a common board, and then there are three boards per dude. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm actually curious, so I'm going to check and see like how much time I spent with this one. Shout out to the Nintendo Switch turning on. <laughs> Played for 90 hours or more. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, to be fair, it's you we're talking about. 
Yeah. You're you're not the uh you're not the the, the prototypical average here. No, no, but 90 hours. <laughs> didn't didn't expect that. I'm going to take a look and see what the average length of this game is. I was thinking it was going to be like 50 that I spent. Uh, this says main story 28, main plus extra 40, completion is 51 and a half. What did I do? I don't know. Did you just leave your switch on at some point? I don't remember leaving it on, but I might have done that. That's that's tr That's fair. But I don't know that I would have left it but on again, like 40 it hours. But again, it is you worth. we're talking about here. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Someone that's... who is just not the norm. <laughs> In any way. In any way, shape, or form. Um, but yeah, 90 hours I apparently put in to date four guys. It's a lot of dudes. Not it's no, lot. it's not a lot. It's a lot of time for these <laughs> it's dudes. A, it's a lot of time for these dudes. A lot of dude time here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that like I I've definitely had uh had like shorter relationships than than <laughs> this anyway um <laughs> god yeah yeah uh the art on this as i mentioned earlier absolutely gorgeous completely gorgeous so pretty um do you do you, do you want to start with the red flags from the get-go if you'd like this is this is your show remember no, this is our you're, show. You're leading the show. We are. You're co leading this ship, my friend. You're leading this ship here. You're the you're, captain. You're my my. I'm first. just the dude who's here singing sea shanties. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. So you play as uh, Hibari Tojo. Um. She she is of the Tojo family. And she has a lot boom, of money. Boom. It's a, <laughs> that's what I was thinking the whole time. Um, it's a it's a very important family with lots and lots of money. She's the heir. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And Nahone. <laughs> Nahone. <laughs> um. So Ibari is seventeen, and um, she has been told by her grandpa. Like, hey, some of the people in the branch family want to get you married to this guy. Yep, yep. <laughs> um, they they want you to get married to this one guy, and she's like, "Well, what's wrong with him? Like, is he is he a bad guy?" He's like, "No, no. Like, he runs a good business. He's he's relatively attractive, and he's not a bad dude. I just don't want you to marry him. I want <laughs> you to get married for love." Oh, and, okay. Yeah, which thanks, Gramps. Um. I mean, I guess that's nice. Yeah, it's nice. Um, but also, you're in the Tobe game. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what he has done is send you and your your butler um, into the vacation house for the Tojo family, and um, he has picked four guys for you as your suitors, and you have to pick one to marry so that you don't have to marry the other guy. Wait, mm -hmm. wait, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay. He just told you, hey, I don't want you to marry this dude. I want you to go marry for love. And then he's like, oh, by the way, I'm going to bring these four dudes in and you're going to pick one of them. Yep. Completely contradicting himself. Yep. Yep. All right. <laughs> Moving um, on. <laughs> <laughs> he tells her straight up, like, each of these guys has something that you lack. And so I want That's you real to mean. It is he Okay, so they have a very like terse relationship. And um she's Good like word usage. Thank you. Um she calls him a vulture the whole time. Like, an old vulture. That's what vultures sound like. And she says that he's like super critical of her and like she she does not like him at all. Um and she is well, her grandpa is in charge of her because um her parents died in an accident when she was five. Classic Otome protagonist line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah. Uh, honestly, they just misunderstand each other. There, there's neither of them are actually being mistreated or saying like awful things. They just don't know how to communicate with each other. Which, wow, 
su- surprising. Shocker. Um, but yeah, he 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 says like each of these guys has something that you lack, and so I want you to like hang out with them and pick one of them to marry. Um, also, here's their profiles. Have fun. Um, so let's talk about the guys. Um, keeping in mind, once again, uh, Hibari is 17 in high school. We got that in mind? We got this in mind. I feel like we're about to go down a bad road. <laughs> we're about to go down a very bad road. Um, okay, so first we have uh, Naita Yagami. Uh, he is 20 years old. Is he a former lawyer turned detective? I wish, I wish he were, but he, or wish he was. I don't remember which one it is. Anyway, I wish, but he was not. I mean, it's still um, lined up with that game. Yeah. Um, I guess I should say, like, she, she, in these profiles, it has, like, all the normal stuff you'd see. Like, here's their height, and here's their birthday, and their blood type, and their favorite things, and the things that they don't like. Um, but then they each have a trait attached to them that she's like, ah! Um, Naita's is that he's a walking debt generator. Um, and he is also basically a dog. And also he likes to be stepped on. Oh no, this guy. (laughs) It's this guy. Um, but yeah, the walking debt generator, she's like, ah, what? Um, cause they all show up at her, at her high school with roses and they're like, marry me. And, um, well, that's not yeah. embarrassing or anything. Right. Right. Exactly. Like what a way to start this. Um, but then she's given the profiles. And so he is, he is the, the walking debt generator. Um, she like legit plays fetch with this guy at one point. Like she, she treats him like a dog. It's so strange. Um, Okay, so then we have Shion. Uh, Shion Mayuzumi. I think that's how you say his name. Uh, he's 22. Remember. Um, and he is a kept man. Kept by who? Um, generally older men. Oh, right. This, yeah, I remember now. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Yeah, generally older men uh, have have kept him, and they are very, very, very explicit in the text. Like, oh no, it was nothing sexual. They just wanted to be around me. I'm like, uh huh, uh huh. I get it. Um, but yeah, he's he's a kept man. Um, then we have a uh, Taiga Isarugi. 23. Uh, the direction we're going is very bad. Uh, he is um, he's a gambling addict. That's his red flag on his profile. Uh, he is an orphan and is very vocal about that. So he's possessive about things because he's like, you know, you can't really have a whole lot of things in an orphanage. Also, very much talks about how he likes big breasts. Very much talks about that, uh, which Ivari does not have those at all. So that's kind of frustrating. Uh, but yeah, he he kind of like, well, he's he's he gambles a lot. Um, and then last, we have Ichia Mitsumori. 26 years old. Um, and he is, his red flag was um, attempted marriage fraud. <laughs> Sorry, I attempted it, but I did not, it did not work out. <laughs> it did not work out. Um, and he basically is like throwing pickup lines back and forth, like constantly throwing them. And is just like, insanely flirty and strange um he's also the cook like he he likes to cook for everybody so like everybody's constantly being like yo make some food it's like ugh, it's not why i'm here i'm trying to marry her 
Um, but yeah, those are your datables. Um, and she's like, well, why did you send me these? Because they are obviously all just trying to get my money. That's, that's what's here. And he's like, eh, no, maybe you should just talk to them. So, um, yeah, we have a 17 year old girl living with all these grown men, um, in a house and they're trying to date her. And, um, also, like I said, her butler's there. His name is Casca. He is 20 and he, he is very protective of Hibari, Hibari, Hibari. Um, so that's where we're starting. Yay. What the heck? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, can I just like pretend she's in college or something? But they very much bring up the fact that she's in high school way too much for me to even pretend. Oofa doofa. Yeah, yeah. I was like, any 26 year old man who wants to date a 17 year old is obviously a disaster. Bad. Very bad. Um, so in your common route, you have like little mini routes with the guys so that they can kind of learn who you are a little bit and vice um, versa and vice versa. Yeah. So like Nayata's, um, is that at one point these like basically like Yakuza looking dudes come up to him like, Hey buddy, Boy. how you doing? Let, let's, let's go for a walk. And he's like, okay. Um, and huh? she kind of freaks out because, you know, he, he goes off with these like shady men and she thinks that he's going to like die. Um, especially with the walking debt generator title given to him. Um, but yeah, he, he eventually comes back and he's like, oh yeah, you know, we, we had a good time and, um, everybody realized that like he he basically like fought them off but didn't think that he was doing that he just thought that they were like wrestling all right he's stupid he is stupid he is a dumb man um <laughs> <laughs> and so Casca's is like all right bro like we we can't do this um if you're gonna try and date her we're, we're gonna have to get rid of some of this debt so he ends up getting him like a ton of jobs so he's like um getting like a construction job and he basically gets like three hours of sleep a night to try and pay all these bills off so that he can actually like be respectable and dating her um but yeah he he's basically a dog like i said like he barks oh. at one point literally barks um, he, he does the, the, um, the fetch thing. Um, also, as I mentioned earlier, he's obsessed with wanting Hibari to step on him. He mentions it a lot. Yep. A lot. He mentions it. And she's like, um, what? What? <sighs> so. Um, that's, that's where we start with him. With Xion, actually very similarly, um, Xion and Ibari go on, like, uh, a, a date, basically. Um, and at one point, this guy in, like, a luxury car pulls up and just, like, grabs uh, Xion and, like, pulls him into his car and drives off with him. And she's like, um, he, he was just kidnapped. What do we do? It's fine. Oh, no. Um, this is a so weekly she, occurrence. Well, that's kind of what he says. Um, she's freaking out, and then he finally walks in. He's like, hey, guys, what's up? And like, um, we were worried about you. What happened? He's like, oh, yeah, you know, that was one of my, my patrons from the past. He just, you know, wanted to talk to me. And uh, I think there was, like, some scenario of him being tied up at one point. But um, anyway, he's like, yeah, this is normal. And she was trying to tell him like no this is not normal what is wrong with you <laughs> uh so this is where he realizes like oh she kind of cares about me cool um for one of the more normal situations here um taiga uh 
he he has a motorcycle by the way uh, and he takes care of it in the garage of the the vacation house and he at one point is like on the phone and she's being nosy and listening to his conversation here's bits and pieces and like hears him saying like you know you need that much oh man like that's going to be hard for me to come up with in a few days um but like you know i i like coming back from underdog um situations and i can do this and she's like oh god he's gambled so much that he's like underwater and he basically like disappears for a while and um she's trying to figure out what he's doing to the point where they hear a giant bang uh coming from his room and he is passed out from exhaustion because um, turns out that again, he grew up in an orphanage and one of the, it's a Catholic or- orphanage. So one of the sisters got sick and the orphans needed, um, like sports bibs for their sports day. And so he's been trying to like hand make all of the bibs for all the, the kids. Um, but he's like, not very good at sewing and that's her hobby. So she decides to help him out with it and, um, makes like hand embroidered bibs for these kids and they love it but like a pretty normal situation there other than the fact that she's like oh no he's a terrible person but it turns out like oh no he's just helping the orphans i mean all things considered compared to the other two yes yeah, a very normal situation <laughs> it's a very normal situation and um he like hugs her at one point and she kind of freaks out but uh but yeah we're, we're just making little sports bibs for the sports day because he was saying that you know the the orphans don't want like the other kids at school to see them without them and like that makes sense i get that um and then last we have ichia the the 26 year old um the old man the old man in this scenario yes (laughs) 26 is not old but it is an old man in this scenario um and he, like I said, he cooks for her all the time and he keeps making like all this really, really fancy food and like a lot of Western food and making like small portions that are very pretty and bringing them to school for her. And everybody's like, oh my God, look at her boyfriend bringing your lunches. Oh my God, this is beautiful. And she's like, oh God. Um, And so at one point she finally like blows up on him is like, yo, I need more food than what you're giving me. Also, I like Japanese food. Please stop making just Western food. Good God, feed me like you would feed anybody else in this house. He's like, okay, okay. Um, I will, I will make food for you as opposed to what I think you want. (laughs) Uh, so again, relatively normal, but, um, still a little strange because he's, Nine years older. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he, like, at one point, she has this little, like, bunny robot thing that goes around the house and gets little, like, vignette stories for her. Um, and there's one where he's, like, Googling, like, what a high school girl is like. And I'm like, Ugh! <laughs> Ugh! Oh, no. It was so upsetting. <laughs> <laughs> oh no um yeah some of those are weird like uh Tigers is him like on his bed with a guitar just doing like a rock show to himself um Shion's is him just naked in the shower and I was like wow that is a huge violation of his privacy to have this little bunny robot going around taking shower pics of him um, and then now you chose a sim just to sleep on the couch. As you do. Um, so that's, that's how we start everything. Are we off to a good start? I mean, kind of. Like half kind and of. half. Yeah, no, that's fair. Um, I will say that, um, I do actually like one of these guys. I was not expecting it. And he does some kind of stupid stuff in his route. But at the same time, I was like, you're not bad. 
I like you because I was expecting to just hate them all. <laughs> it's off to a great start. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, um, when you get to the like turning point of the the story, basically, like Grandpa calls you. In. Oh, another thing is that during the common route, at one point, um, she is hanging out with her friend, which I showed you a picture of her friend. Um, mm -hmm. she, she has uh, a friend named Samugi who is, you know, normal gal, normal high school gal during the day. And then like when she leaves school, she becomes like gothic low lead. <laughs> <laughs> um, she has another friend who also changes her appearance. Um, I, I'm blank. Noah is her name. Um, she's also a regular gal during the day. And then, um, after school, she puts on a blonde wig and short shorts and just goes on a ton of dates. Uh, so those are her like love advisors, her best friends. Uh, so they, they're helpful. Anyway, she goes um, to hang out with, I think it was Samugi at that point, And she um, gets lost because she never goes out by herself. She usually has um, Kasuga, her butler. And uh, she she asked a guy like, "Hey, how do I get somewhere?" And this dude's like, "Ah, yeah, I, I can take you there. You want to like get some coffee with me?" She's like, "Oh my god, of course I go out and this dude's hitting on me." <laughs> uh, and this other dude um, comes up and is like, "Ah, yes, this is my girlfriend. Like, goodbye." And ends up getting um, her number, and they talk a few times in person, but also via text about the other guys. And he gives advice about them. His name is um, Kazu. Kazu. Yes, that's his name. Um, he will become relevant eventually. But he is not yet relevant. But I wanted to make sure I brought him up. Anyway, uh, so I did Naita's route first. And um, once you finish the common route, like I said, you, you're basically taken to grandpa and he's like, all right, well, they're really pushing this marriage thing. So you gotta, you gotta make a choice. And she asked like, Hey, can I do like a fake temporary, like fiance? Can I just pick one as like a placeholder? Uh, and so that's essentially the, how you pick your, your route mm. is you pick your temporary fiance. <laughs> Um, and so I started with Nayuta, um, and he's a very excitable guy. Very, very excitable. You don't say. Yeah. Um, so it, it turns out that Nayuta thought that he was not trying to be a husband for her. He wanted to be a bodyguard. <laughs> All right. So she like says to him like, "Oh yeah, like I want I want you to be the one that I I pretend is my fiance." And he's like, "Huh? No, no, I was supposed to be your bodyguard. I'll I'll, I'll guard you." And she's like, "Huh? What? No." Um. So she gets really really upset because he didn't understand her feelings. Um, and turns out that he is like from a big important bodyguard family <laughs> that's a phrase i just said it's a really good uh, phrase yep and um his uncle is her grandpa's bodyguard and naita at one point was a a bodyguard for somebody else um but got kicked out of the the big important bodyguard family because he was supposed to protect somebody else that was important and he couldn't do it because basically the other guy was a butthead and he's like no i can't protect somebody like that dude sucks uh so so he got like thrown out of the family and he's been trying to like get back in good graces so he can be a bodyguard again <laughs> um all of this in this scenario um what's going on is that um You've already watched, um, they call it The Guardian in in 
the Atome, uh, it's it's basically just the bodyguard uh, with Kevin Costner and Whitney Houston. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Even <laughs> the bodyguard character in the movie is even called Kevin. And um, like they keep watching the movie and they're like, oh, yeah, that, that reminds me of me and you. That, ah, how about that? Um, and she keeps like comparing their relationship to that. And eventually the the other guys are trying to like help out the situation because they realize like, okay, she has feelings for him. He is stupid and he's not getting it. So let's just <laughs> push this a little bit further. And so they like do a screening of the movie at, at the house so that he has to watch The Guardian. <laughs> And she's just like panicking because, you know, she's been comparing it to it this whole time. And he's like, wow, that bodyguard, he's such a cool guy. He reminds me of me. And then eventually, like, he he borrows the Blu-ray of it from her and keeps watching it. And Taiga goes up to him and is like, hey, buddy. So why you keep watching the movie? He's like, oh, yeah, you know, it's just a cool movie. I like the action scenes. And, and you know, I, I, it's just, there's just something about it. You know, I really like this heroine. And he's like, oh, well, it reminds me of her. Oh, Tyga's like, good boy. <laughs> good job. You figured it out. Um, so, like, this entire context of his route is just framed by the bodyguard, <laughs> the movie. God. Uh, which is great. Um, oh my goodness. There's even like a I will always love you reference, which is hysterical. Oh my. Oh my. Someone does not like the bodyguard. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, Game Boy was biting him in the butt. So. At the end, he has to, he has to get he has to learn. <laughs> oh no. Um anyway. So, um, it basically this whole like bodyguard thing becomes an issue and, um, the grandpa's like, well, this isn't working out. Uh, so you're just going to bodyguard her. You know, you pass the test. You're going to be the bodyguard. Uh, we'll just marry her off to the other guy. Like that's, that's what we'll do. And, uh, Naita realizes like, I don't like that. That does not sound like something I want to happen. Um, so, like, the day before Christmas Eve, I think, when they're supposed to do the announcement, uh, he, like, sneaks into the grandpa's, um, I guess, house compound. I don't know what it is. And, like, knocks on her window and they have, like, a moment. Um, and she's trying to figure out, like, how, how do we make this work out? Uh, also, I forgot to mention... At one point, they go on a date, and they run into a mascot character. He's a dog, the dog mascot character. And uh, she's like, man, I saw one of those uh, at some point, and uh, it, it really helped me out. Like, it, it saved me from some, like, weirdos. And he's like, oh, yeah, I know. And she's like, what? How do you know? He's like, that was me. I was in the suit. Um, so then they like go through the whole story of like, she was being harassed or something like that. And he goes to stop it in the mascot suit. Um, and at one point she like, he gets knocked on the ground. She loses her footing and steps on him. And that's where that whole like step on me thing came from is that he realized at that point, like, oh, I have a thing for this. Um, and like got the energy and got back up and saved her saved her uh she sent a little thank you card to him at some point <laughs> via her butler um but yeah so that's just a yakuza that, side story it really is it really is it sounds exactly like a yakuza side story um so um the the christmas eve event comes where they're going to announce her her engagement to the other guy and um, the the three other dudes are there and like, huh, well, this kind of sucks, right? Mm, wonder what's going to happen. And the power goes out. And when the power comes back up, uh, 
there are just a ton of the dog mascot just dancing around in the room. There's several of them. Scary. It's very scary. And one like dances up to her and is like, hello, I'll protect you. Except for he doesn't talk because he's a dog mascot. Um, and his uncle comes up and is like, all right, you, we're going to fight. And um, so uncle and Nayuta in dog mascot costume <laughs> fight. And at one point, Nayuta gets knocked to the ground and Hibari loses her footing and steps on him again. And he once again is energized and pops up and knocks his uncle out. And uh, basically is like, no, I realize I like you and you can't get engaged to that other guy because I want to be engaged to you. I want to be your bodyguard, but I also want to be in love with you. And she's like, oh, finally. Everybody else is like, oh, God, finally. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, so, you know, he was inspired once again by being stepped on and they they end up living happily ever after and getting married. Bodyguard fiance. Bodyguard fiance. Um, yep. <laughs> that sure did happen. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> You're right though. It sounds just like a Yakuza side story. Oh boy. Uh <laughs> So that's the gist of the Nights of route. Uh, what do you think about that? I mean, if he wasn't a weirdo who liked who had his his weird kinks out for everything, like it could be relatively cute. Yeah. Yeah, like his he's definitely a himbo. Like that could be fine, but like <laughs> they go in some directions. <laughs> I honestly feel like I would have liked him a lot better if he would shut up about being stepped on. Yeah. Like, I can even forgive how dumb he is because at points it's really funny. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he just kept bringing it up and I was like, oh my God, this is how he's going to be inspired to move on is like, he's going to get stepped on. Okay. Wow. Wow. So, um, that was my first route. <laughs> uh, then I moved on to uh, Xion's route. And... Um, he has some things going on. Um, so, as I mentioned, he was, like, the kept man and ended up having, like, several dude patrons that would take care of him. Um, they go on a date. At one, well, actually, what happens first is Samugi takes her on a little outing um, to go to this art exhibit this like photography exhibit that's up and um it's this one photographer's angel series that they're showing and uh, she sees this one that's like i think the angel is called amethyst yeah amethyst she's like wow this is the most beautiful picture i've ever seen in my life like he has beautiful eyes oh my god <laughs> more yakuza beautiful uh, eyes <laughs> thank you <laughs> Uh, they also run into like a small child in there named Rue. And Rue is like, I'm going to be one of these angels. I'm going to figure it out. And he's like a social media star at this point, like a little Instagram cosplayer star guy. He's like nine, I think. Um, but terrifying. he's just like, it's so terrifying. And he's just determined, like, I will be one of these angels. And so. Hibari is like mesmerized by this. So she goes on a date with Shion to the photography exhibit again. And she once again goes to the Amethyst picture. And she's like, wow, you know, this is so beautiful. I wonder what he's doing now. And he's like, oh, um, he's right next to you. It's me. That's me. That that's me. That that was that I was a child model. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, what? Um so yeah, uh, the T is Amethyst who forgives all is is what they called him. And he is an angel and he was nine when the picture was taken, which by the way, just in case you're curious, uh, kiddo is just fucking naked in this picture. Um, you know. Not good. No, no. Um, 
and you find out like, oh yeah, this famous photographer is his dad. He is half French. Um, yeah, Shion is half French. He he definitely wants a croissant and a baguette. <laughs> and I don't know, what else is French? France. <laughs> <laughs> um and so Rue runs up and is like, That's you? Oh my god, can I get a picture with you? And he's like, No. I'm on a date. What are you talking about? And um, she like encourages him and they go to get a picture and then like a paparazzi guy takes a picture of him with Rue. And um, she sounds like, dude, did, did you bring this guy? And he's like, yeah, you know, I was just trying to, you know, help him out so we can get a new story. And um, so she on basically is like, yo, kid i hate you you suck um <laughs> which sure uh and um I was like i just wanted to know how to be an angel uh ibari's well kasuga the the butler basically like makes most of that go away like they they keep the one picture with uh shion and and rue together but like anything with hibari in it is gone so that ends up on the news and everybody realizes like, oh, he should be a model. He's beautiful. And she she gets it in her head. Like they go on a date at one point. And she's like, you're not good enough to date me because you're unemployed, which, wow, that was a <laughs> thing to say to somebody. Um, she literally says that to him. Like, you're not good enough to date me. Like, you're not good enough to be part of the Tojo family because you're unemployed. And, um, like, you should go back to being a model so that you can, you know, have some status and be part of this family. And he's like, okay. All right. Sure. Um, so she, like, a few days later is hanging out with Samugi and Noah and, like, looks up and there's this, like, movie billboard thing. And it's him starring in it with, like, makeup of some sort it's like a fairy tale theme and everybody's like oh my god he's beautiful um and people eventually put it together that he is amethyst he's the same guy he's just adult now he's not nine um which we also through this route find out that like the reason that all these like older guys have been like paying for him is because they like the picture of him as amethyst it was like the implications of the fact that they are keeping this adult man as a kept man because they like a picture of him when he was nine. Ew. It's real messed up. It's real messed up. It's real, it's messed, real up. messed up. Um, he's like, yeah, you know, they, they like to see me look beautiful. I'm like, Ugh. Beautiful eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, and so... There are some real messed up things that happen in this route. So uh, I should have, this one's not even the one that needs a content warning, but I should have given the content warning. I forgot. Anyway, um, at one point he has a conversation with Tyga, which if you haven't noticed, Tyga is the one that like actually knows how to do things and is actually like aware of how to be a human. Yes. Um, amazing. But um he has a conversation with Tyga and he's like, I want to make her cry. I want to make her regret what she said to me. It was like, Jesus Christ, dude. Like he literally says multiple times, like, I want to make her miserable. I want to make her cry. I'm like, Oh, okay. This is a healthy relationship. Um, so he basically is like gone all the time now. And she's like, Oh, I miss him. This is sad, but I told him to go be an, unem or an unemployed guy. I, I got mad at him for being unemployed and, you know, he's doing what I wanted, but I'm sad because he's not around. Um, and he ends up doing like another ad and there's like this little cherub angel kid and Rue's like, that's me. That's me. You can't see my face, but that's me. Um, because Rue and Shion, like, 
have a conversation at one point at a cafe and they come to some kind of understanding and he's basically like, I'll give you some advice on how to get in with my dad if you help me out. So they, they do this ad together. And at one point he's like, Hey, I'm thinking about like going overseas and doing a modeling campaign over there, but I'd be gone for a while. You know, sorry about that. Um, but I've got this one big campaign thing that I got to do the last ad for, and we're going to be filming it in front of the Christmas tree on Christmas Eve. And like Rue calls her up at one point. It's like, so he's going to kiss a girl in this ad. And he doesn't seem very bothered by that. Does that bother you? Yes, that does bother her. Um, so the the day of the the shooting come, oh god shooting of the ad sorry um <laughs> comes up and the the guys are like helping her out once again like one of the best things about this game is that everybody's like big bro energy here like once they realize who you have feelings for or even just in general like everybody's just friends they want to help out which is really cool. Like they don't really consider each other competitors. It's nice. I like that. It's like yeah. a found family type thing. But um, so they realize like, oh, we got to get her to that that scene. Um, so Tyga ends up playing like essentially like her manager and saying like, oh, she's the actress for this um, this event. Like we need to get through. Uh, Naita is her bodyguard. Uh, <laughs> and um, Ichia ends up like driving them there because he's the only one with a car and so they end up like basically bodying through the, the crowd to get her in there which is real real nice of them and um, she, she like runs up to him and sees him and um, they end up having like a heart to heart and he hugs her and um, that's like their big confession scene, essentially. And later you find out like they used that for the ad. They didn't use her face, but they, they used the confession for the ad and like took the audio out and she's super mad about it. What the heck? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he was like, yeah, you know, we thought that we would get like a, a, a really nice, honest reaction for this. And it was for like a lip gloss. So he like, puts the lip gloss on her lips and um she asked at one point like well why didn't you kiss me then i thought it would call for a kiss he's like no i wanted to be the one to see your kissing face i didn't want anybody else to see that which sure i guess um but yeah uh she basically tells him like it's fine you can be unemployed i don't care i just want you around and he's like okay that's all i wanted I made you cry. I'm happy. And it's like, uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then like one of the little wrap ups is that um, Rue had been in on it. The whole cafe thing was him like helping him out with the whole, like, I'm going to call her and tell her about this kissing scene. And in exchange, um, Rue got in good with um, Xian's, uh dad and he, his dad is starting a little devils um photography series instead and he's the first one in that and they're like oh yeah that's really fitting like that kid is a devil <laughs> um so yeah that's that's his it's like okay like the fact that he's blatantly saying like i want to hurt her pretty messed up mm -hmm. it's pretty messed up okay um so i'm gonna go on to a guy that actually didn't hate um he was actually kind of all right <laughs> he, he had a moment that i was like oh god what are you doing but turns out he is the least offensive of all of them um, and that's Tyga. And um, 
again, he, he's, uh, like one of the worst things about him, even though it's not a terrible thing is again, he has that like weird possessiveness of like, this is my item. Um, so there are multiple scenes where it's like played up as a goof that he's like, I have flan or flan or whatever it's pronounced. I looked it up and it's pronounced both ways. So, um, but he, const- he constantly writes his name on things so that you can know like that it's his, because he said that's how you had to, had to get by. Um, but when you are having the conversation with your grandpa and you have to pick a fake fiance, she's like, oh, I'm going to pick Tyga. And grandpa starts laughing. And he's like, hey, she picked you, dude. And he's like, dude, you blew my cover. And he comes out and she's like, why are, why are you here? Why, why are you here? What is happening? And uh, he, he confesses like, I'm not actually trying to marry you. I'm I'm just here to be an observer. I'm basically a spy for your grandpa. All right. Uh, me and your gramps were bros. Uh, you know, we hang out. We have coffee. He also funds all of my trips that I take overseas, uh, so I can see the world. Like, thanks, grandpa. Um. And that's because the grandpa used to like go hang out at the orphanage and like got really attached to Tyga and considers him like his other grandkid. So he like really tries to take care of him, which is also something that would be straight out of Yakuza. Mm -hmm. Um, And so she's struggling at this point because she's like, oh God, like Tyga is not trying to date me. So what do I do? Well, I'll just like go talk to him all the time about everything. I'll just go vent to him. Um, so she ends up just feeling extremely comfortable with him and decides like, I'm just going to go hang out in his room all the time and talk about like the stupid stuff that the guys are doing and how my day is going, all that. Um, and at one point, Tig is like, do you realize... That you're coming into my room. I'm a dude. You're coming in like every single night. Like you're gonna give a man ideas. And she's like, no, no, that won't happen. We're we're bros. Um, so he basically like freaks her out at that point because he's like, you know, I, I could kiss you if I wanted to. And she's like, no, 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 no. Um, so that's that's a thing. Whoops. Um, so the other dudes notice that like they're they're closer and they're like, oh yeah, you know, you guys must be dating. He's like, no, 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 we're we're not. And he's trying to like not blow his cover that he's the spy, basically. And she's trying to like not blow the cover that she has the hots for him. <laughs> and uh, also not blow that he's the spy and at one point they all have a conversation all the dudes are having a conversation and she's well spying on them um and they're they're all talking about like women and uh taiga goes on this whole rant about like oh yeah you know the one thing about hibari is you know she She's not very busty. You know, there's not much there. And you know, I, I like them big bazongas. I, I I'm a big fan of the 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 tatas. You know, they I like I like the big um what's what's the word I'm looking for? The hammer hammers. The hammer hammers, thank you. And um I mean he just keeps on going about how much he loves big boobs, just constant. And the other guys are like, um, <laughs> you should stop you should stop because they've noticed that she's like looking around the corner and uh he just oblivious keeps talking about how much he loves big boobs um and so she gets off and like won't talk to him for a good while and he's like oh um that was probably not a good move on my part and he eventually explains, like, I was really trying to throw them off on, not, like, on everything. I went too far. I understand that I went too far. I'm very, very sorry. Um, and so, like, he he realized, like, I, I really, really messed up on that. 
Um, but then also announces like, well, as of today, I'm no longer a boob man. <laughs> I am now a leg man. Cause he says that she has nice legs. Um, I forget, like I sent you a screenshot or something like the, the church of games or something like that. It was so funny. Um, because he just like completely gives up on boobs because he realized like, I, I like her and you know, it's, it's fine. And they end up having a conversation soon after that. And he's like, you know what, as of today, I'm giving up on this whole spy thing. I'm, I'm pursuing you. I'm going to flirt with you. See how this goes. She's like, um, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Um, so I, I think that one thing that I like about this one is that they really built up that whole, like, we're friends thing first, because mm -hmm. once she realized he was a spy, it's like, oh yeah, we, you know, we can, we can hang out. And then he started realizing that he liked her, even though, you know, he did the whole big boob thing. Um, and so he really starts pursuing her. She's really happy about it. And then at one point, somebody says it might have been Kasuga or might have been, oh, I know what it is. He he took her to the orphanage to go meet the kiddos and the sisters. And um, like everybody loves her there and is real excited. And one of the sisters says to him, like, oh man, you know, I always knew that you would go far. And, you know, I, I think you'll you'll do a fine job fitting in with the family. You know, you you just you just gotta figure out how to navigate being a tojo and you know um you know you're really going places and he has a moment of like oh f i can't do this like i i've been somebody who like travels the world and gambles on everything and like i sometimes have lost everything and have to figure out how to even get back to the country like that's been my life so far. It's been a very like free life and like, I'm kind of a like lower class guy. So this is probably like not the place for me. So he starts having doubts on like, can I actually do this? Which is fair. I think that's fair. Mm -hmm. um, but he panics and he leaves. Um, so that freaks everybody out. And they're trying to figure out, like, what do we do about this? And um, she ends up just, like, texting him every day and being like, hey, these are the things that happened today at the house, and I just want you to know. Um, but she doesn't ask him, like, where are you or what are you doing or are you coming back or anything like that? It's just, like, updates on what's happening. And so, like, they show him at one point in, like, a really motel and he's like reading the text messages and basically like realizes you know I, I gotta go back but he's kind of embarrassed at that point um she gets a letter from Santa which is wild um apparently oh, oh, oh. There's, there's like a service that you can like get a letter from Santa sent to people I didn't know that that existed. I don't know if it actually does exist, but it does in this game. I don't know. But at the end of it, it's like meet in front of the giant tree on Christmas Eve. Uh, so she's like, wait a minute, this is from him. Oh. Um, so she, she goes to meet him. And uh, he basically comes up to her and is like, yeah, I know you're mad at me. Like, that's that's fine. You have every right to be mad at me. Um, do you want to just take my hand and, like, get rid of the Tojo name and run away with me? And uh, if you, well, regardless of what you do in terms of route, she'll say no. Um, but how, how it goes down is a little bit different. But essentially, she, like, freaks out and is like no like why would I do that like this is a big part of me and like my identity and um you know if you're agreeing to date me like you're agreeing to date like all of this 
And he's like, yeah, you know what? That's fair. Honestly, if you had said that you were going to give it all up, I, I would have left immediately. Um, because that's not who you are. And so, um, they end up well, yelling at each other at one point, uh, in front of, in front of the Christmas tree. And they're like, Oh God, everybody's looking at us. We got to go. Um, well, I say yelling at each other. She's yelling at him. He's not yelling back. He's trying to calm her down. Uh, and she's just mad because he left, but, um, he's very calm through most of this route, which is really nice. Like even when he's having his panic modes, he's still like very level-headed. Um, but yeah, they work it out and, you know, get married. Woo. 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 Um, the, th- the reason that I brought up the whole like possessiveness thing earlier, um, he's not possessive in a creepy way, which is good. Um, cause that can go very, very far in a, in a bad way. Mm-hmm. Um, but at one point, like they're having a party to celebrate the fact that they are getting engaged and like the guys are all, all the guys are there and they're at their, she, they're at the grandpa's house and, um, they're all talking. He's like, wait a minute, give me a pen. And, um, somebody like gives him a pen and he takes her hand and he writes his name on her hand and, he like shows everybody's hands like, look, she's mine. You guys can't have her. <laughs> um, and everybody's response is just like, Jesus Christ, your handwriting's bad. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really cute. Like he, he's, he's like I'm proud of himself. Um, but he's the least awful of all of them. I liked him a bit, even though he has some weird moments, like the big boob thing. Hooray. Hooray. Um, I get, I don't know. I thought it was fun. Uh, so let's, let's talk about the last guy. The old man. The old man. Um, this is the one that needs a content warning. Um, there's straight up like sexual assault that happens in this route. So, um, yikes, just be aware. Anyway, um, so Ichia, like I said, is, is 26. He's, he's way too old for her, but here we are. Uh, and he's just like disgustingly flirty and she can't get him to like break out of that. She's, she's like, I don't know who you are. What, what is all this? Um, and so she's really kind of doing a a reverse thing of like she's having to break into him as opposed to her like them breaking into her Mm -hmm. because she can't figure out who he is he's just doing like this weird fake flirty person thing um and so they they go on some dates and she's like okay this is fine i guess Um, but she still like, can't figure out who he is. Um, they, they end up going on one date where she's actually like starting to get to know him a little bit and like liking him. Okay. At that point. And he gets very, this is not the part that I'm talking about earlier, but this is still something that you shouldn't do. He gets very, very mixed signals and decides he's going to kiss her. And, um, he like read everything wrong and she gets super mad at him. Cause she's like, that was my first kiss. You took it without my permission. You suck, which is fair. Um, and so he like, tries to avoid her for a few days and once again Tyga being you know the only one who has any kind of brain in his house <laughs> um he's like dude like you took her first kiss that's not cool like you need to apologize to her like I know that it's awkward and you're trying to avoid her but that's not the problem you need to apologize you did a bad thing. He's like, oh, I do need to apologize. Like, wow, really? 
Oh, wow. Um, but this also ends up having a moment where he just completely freaks out and he shuts himself in his room and nobody can get him to come out. And so they finally decide, like, we're going to have an intervention. Like, this is a problem. He has to come out. So um, all the boys and um, Ibari go to his room and they're like, hey, buddy, you got to you gotta come out of there. And we're all hungry. Please feed us. Um, and Taiga actually like goes in first and is like, comes up pretty soon after and is like, oh, oh, okay. Um, I just saw something that I don't think I needed to see. And, um, basically the rest of the guys go in and are like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, maybe this is something you need to see. <laughs> so she goes in and she can't find him at first. She's like, what are they talking about? What is going on? Did he leave? Like, where is he? Um, then she finally finds like a big lumpy thing under the bed sheets, like in the corner of the room and like lifts the sheets up and sees him. And he's just like crying his eyes out, like full on sobbing, which his voice actor just completely nails. Holy crap. Did he do a good job? Um, but he's basically like freaking out saying like, no one's ever going to love me. Like no one's ever loved me. All I've ever wanted is for like somebody to actually care about me and love me. And I just keep messing up and this is the worst. Um, and he's like, now you hate me because I messed up and I'm really, really sorry. And, uh, she's like, whoa, 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 buddy, (laughs) buddy, it's okay. I mean, he is just full on in breakdown mode. Um, and time to kink shame her. She's like, oh, I kind of like seeing this guy cry. What? I mean, uh, yeah, she says that. What? Yeah, she's like, I'm into him crying. And like, there's another part in his story that she takes him to a movie theater to watch a sad movie specifically so she can try and get him to cry again. It's like, holy crap. That's messed up. Um, But this is like the turning point where she like sees him as something else because of him crying at her. Um, But he comes out and he's like, okay, let's, let's try and like start over. I'm really sorry about the whole kiss thing. Like that was, that was a not cool move. And um, he ends up actually like being less of a weirdo. Like he talks like a normal person now, which is nice. Um, which she she kind of at one point is like I, I kind of miss that a little bit, but it's also kind of nice, which is also weird. Um, so this guy very obviously has issues. If he's like in his room crying under the sheets, saying like no one ever will love me, is like even if I try very hard, like nothing I ever do isn't good enough. No one will love me for it. Um, holy crap. (laughs) So you get a little bit of his backstory and basically like every girl he's ever dated is like, yeah, you're just like too perfect. I can't deal with it. This is a mess. And, um, also find out that like he was kind of shunned by his family, um, because he was like sensitive he's a sensitive dude um and they were like highly logical blah 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 people um and so he finds out that like he can like be flirty and nice with women and that they always like are good to him and that's the only people who are ever nice to him Uh, so that's why he became like weird Casanova flirty man is because like it gave him some kind of validation that he was a good person, even though like, no, that's not how this works. Oh boy, this man needs therapy. (laughs) He needs therapy so bad. Um, so they go on another date at one point and, um, Instead of, like, in the first date, he made her, like, pick everything that she wanted to do, and 
she got upset at that. So this time she's like, I want you to pick some things that we're going to do. Like, I don't want to be in charge of the whole date. Um, so they, they go and they have a date and they have fun. And as they're walking back to his car, uh, this, well, I guess I should mention, they also have dinner at one point. She's like, I want to know your past. And he says, you know, like, I promise I will tell you, I can't tell you right now. Um, she's like, okay, well, as long as you tell me at some point, we're all right. So then they're walking to the car and, uh, the guy that I mentioned earlier that was giving her dating advice via text messages and, um, like hanging out with her and all that named Kazu shows up and is like, so you didn't tell her, huh? And, uh, she's like, huh? Why are you here, Kazu? Who are you? What is going on? Why do you know each other? He's like, yeah, like, you know, if, if, if you just told her, I would have let this go, but you didn't tell her. So, um, here we are. I'm going to take off my sunglasses and my hat. By the way, I'm his twin brother. Secret brother. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, um, his name is Kazuya. Um, hear you? Kazuya. Oh. Yeah, Kazuya. Um, and turns out the guy that has been pushing for her to marry him for like business reasons is this guy is Kazuya. Oh, all right. Yep. Um, and so he's like, well, since you can't tell her who you are and what's going on, I'm just going to throw my hat in the ring time for me to try and date her and be the fifth guy. And he's like, uh, no, 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 no. Um, and at this point, like Kazuya will like pop in occasionally and like take her on dates and blah, blah, blah. And Ichiya just kind of like shrinks down into himself and is a hot mess because he just has issues of like not feeling good enough the whole time. And she kind of does like some weird manipulative stuff of like, you know, well, what if I just go and pick him? And he's like, well, I can't, I can't decide for you. Like, if that's a decision that you make, I have to respect that. And she's like, why was he fighting for me? And I was like, <laughs> maybe don't go to this guy who very obviously has issues with his twin brother and be like, well, what if I pick him? Like, I don't know. But this is also the problem of a 17 year old trying to date somebody who is 26 and has many, many issues. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Kazuya ends up doing like PowerPoint presentations on why they should get married. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> oh, man. And um she she's obviously not into that and she keeps getting more mad at Ichia for like not standing up for their relationship or whatever and at one point uh Kazuya is like all right the three of us are going to go out to dinner we're going to talk and so they do they go out to dinner they talk and he has a proposal for them that Kazuya will marry Hibari um, and she will have Ichia as her, like, paramour, as her lover, essentially. And that it won't matter if, like, she has kids because they're going to look like him anyway because he's a twin. Um, and that that's how they'll, they'll s settle this is that, like, on paper, he'll, he'll marry her. The businesses will, um, combine and then Ichia can just have her as the, the romance part and, each is like F off <laughs> ends up like grabbing him by the collar um at the dinner table and tells him like absolutely not get the hell out of here um she has a moment of like oh my god that's like the hottest thing i've ever seen in my life um again no no you have very strange taste gal um but this was the whole like fighting back thing that she wanted from him. So she finally decides like, this is, this is what I wanted. Um, but Kazuya is not giving up. So, um, 
This is a huge mess. Huge, huge mess. And um, at one point, Kazia just decides, like, I'm going to push it. I'm going to start, like, leaking out that, like, I'm going to be engaged to her. And so, like, it becomes a whole thing that on Christmas Eve, they're going to have the engagement um, announcement and it'll it'll be over. And Ichia starts, like, panicking and freaking out. And eventually he just, like, leaves the house and nobody can find him. Um, and she ends up trying to like text him and call him, but like none of her stuff will go through. And, um, her butler, Kasuga comes in and is like, yeah, so, um, I was informed that he has stepped out. He's no longer going to be a suitor. He's blocked you. We got a new phone. Like you cannot contact him. And she freaks out because she doesn't know what to do at this point. And she realizes that she has feelings for him. What? Shocker. I know, I know. Um, we eventually find out that, like, Kasuga is in on this, that he basically said, like, block her, um, figure your shit out, and, like, you know, this is the situation. So, um, I, I skipped an important part here, and I just realized that. And I probably skipped it for a reason. Um, so let's talk about what happened with these twins. Let's talk about this trauma. Um, at one point, they go into the backstory, um, which is, you know, Kazi has always been the best. He's always been number one. Like, the only thing that Ichi is good with is women. And, um, he ends up actually, like, getting adopted into, like, a minor part of the family because he's just tired of being part of that main family. And um, Kazuya says, like, oh, well, you know, that's better for you anyway, which upsets him. And um, Hibari and Kazuya have a conversation. He's like, I thought I was being nice. And she's like, no, no, you weren't being nice. <laughs> um, but there ends up being a situation where there was some gal from a family who wanted to marry Kazuya. And, um, he did not want to marry her. And so the solution that they came up with was that Ichia would basically pretend to be him and date her and, you know, get her off his back. Uh, nothing could go wrong here, I'm sure. No. Uh, so... This is where things get really, really messed up and continue to be messed up. Um, this, like, heiress gal ends up, like, drugging him and, like, basically sexually assaulting him while he's drugged. Like, he even says, like, I woke up in a bed and I was completely naked and I was drugged and I couldn't move. And, like, the art for him has some of his clothes on, thankfully. But he's just, like, crying while she's, like, next to him on in, in the bed. I'm like, oh, my God. What is happening here? Like, they're just going to gloss over the fact that, like, this man was sexually assaulted. Okay. Um, but he's like, yeah, you know, my brother was always one step ahead. And he found out that this was happening and ended up, like, getting a recorded confession and threatened to ruin her life and blah, blah, blah. And I, I couldn't even get that whole thing right. And that was the um, alleged marriage fraud, marriage fraud was that she was accusing them of fraud because he was saying that he was his brother when he was not. Um, yeah, that was a whole thing. Oofa doofa. Yeah. Um, so anyway, back to the, the main part of this. Um, which, who boy, um, I was just angry this whole time. Um, he finds out about this whole like Christmas Eve engagement thing and has the most rational response to it, which is I'm going to kidnap her and drive off with her in my sports car. And um, 
luckily we have Nayata who has a driver's license, which everybody's surprised by. And he's like, yeah, let's do a car chase. Woo. So they do a car chase. Um, and you know, he's driving erratically and very dangerously with a 17 year old girl in the car that he supposedly loves, uh, loves very much. Um, and goes until he runs out of gas and then he like grabs her and runs to like the edge of a cliff and basically says like okay look like I need you to love me or I'm going to kill myself and I was like no this is so manipulative um and she's like trying to figure out what to say and uh like he's like taking steps back towards the cliff as she's like figuring it out. Um, And, you know, depending on at this point, like what your choices are either, um, either some of the dudes kind of like, no, no, come back. Um, Or she like hugs him and basically says like, I'm in love with you and I want you and only you. And um, she, basically ends up having a situation where like he says that he can't live without her and that becomes like an obsession for her that like she she wants to have somebody who is completely dependent on her that she like knows that they can't be without her which is really messed up um so this entire thing is just a huge huge mess like this is a train wreck of a relationship Oh boy. Um, and like, she repeatedly has him like say like, I I can't live without you. And, um, he ends up crying at this point and she's like, oh yes, the tears are back. Um, Kazuya like shows up and is like, cool. Glad you didn't kill yourself. Um, I was a little worried about that. Uh, let's just have an announcement that you are going to marry her, but we're still going to have like somebody in the family from this business marrying into the Tojo family. So like we could still have a business merger. It's fine. It's like, why didn't you guys just do that to begin with and not have all this weird nonsense you've been doing? Um, so yeah, uh, that's messed up and I hated it. It was real bad. If anybody ever says to you, like, if you are not going to love me, I'm going to kill myself. Like, oh my god. That is a mess. Yeah, that whole thing took a turn. Yeah. Yeah. Not a good turn. Um, bad no. Turn. Very bad turn. I was like, this is this is not romantic. This is not fun. I hate this. Like, let's go back to the weirdo who wants to step on us. Or have, him, <laughs> have us step on him. It's bad when you're like, yeah, let's go back to that. <laughs> right? Right? It's so bad. And so... um. Like, she just repeatedly has him, like, say, like, that that phrasing, and she keeps trying to make him cry and stuff, and it's like, oh, God, you're a mess. Um, so that, that left a really bad taste in my mouth. I was not happy with that route. And then I started doing the true end route. Mm-hmm. Um, this one. This one is a mess. You thought that one was bad. Here we go. So, um, in the true route, she's basically like, I can't decide with them. Like, I, I don't know who to pick. I don't, I don't know what to do here. And he's like, that's fine. We'll, we'll give you some more time. And they end up having, uh, well, she ends up having a conversation with, Noah and Samugi and they're talking about like the whole situation and like all the all the pieces that are in play and um she runs into Taiga at one point too and Taiga and her have a conversation and finds out that he's a spy uh, <laughs> and he's basically like um, I've heard this story from your grandpa's perspective and like, that's not what happened at all because she 
she basically tells a story of like how she was five years old and her parents were dead. And so she came to live with her grandpa and that her grandpa came into her room and had like this big, scary smile and was like a terrifying person. And she didn't want to be around him. And he was basically like a demon. And from grandpa's perspective, he had been like practicing trying to smile at her um, because he was really excited about having his granddaughter come live with him. Uh, and apparently like is not a good smiler, which is fine. Some people just aren't uh, and ended up scaring her. And he's like, yeah, like your grandpa really loves you. And he talks about like how much he loves you all the time. This is a complete weird misunderstanding. Like somebody must be giving you bad info. Um, and so she has the conversation with Noah and, um, and Samugi and they're like, well, how would you have gotten bad information on this? And they realize like the only connection to like someone who could have been feeding her bad information is the butler, <gasps> Kasuga. Um, and Samugi's like, yeah, he's been trying to isolate you. Like, do you, do you not notice that? And she's like, no, no, he's, he's my beloved butler. I love him to pieces. Like he's, he's such a great guy. Um, and they're like, no, he, you know, you should be careful about him. Um, and so we get this reveal that by the way, her parents aren't dead. What? They live in England. What? Yep. Um, apparently that was her dad's idea to just say that they were dead. And, um, there was an accident when she was five that made her lose her memory. And the problem was that she has an older brother. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> she has an older brother and they were very concerned about this child because like nothing could excite him and he was just a very strange kiddo and like they would give him toys and they would like have him listen to music and watch movies and just nothing would interest him until he had a baby sister and then he became obsessed with her and um when she was five and he was seven he decided that he would do a better job raising her than the parents would. So he was going to run off with her and um, raise her himself. And um, during the whole like running off thing, people are chasing them. And um, Hibari is a five-year-old and like falls and freaks out. And he like tries to go back for her. Um, but there ends up being an accident. She like gets hit by a car. And so that's why she has the memory loss. And they're like, okay, well, we need to get her away from this kid because he's obsessed with her. So we're going to send her back to Japan. She's going to live with grandpa. And we're not going to talk about this. We're, we're not going to talk about the situation anymore. Um, and eventually... The older brother finds out, like, ah, uh, yes, she is alive in Japan and lives with grandpa. And so, like, they end up having a weird, like, wager that, like, if she can get him to trust her, um, wait, no, if she can get her to trust him, then, um, like, he can stick around. And so he, like, adopts a new identity and becomes the butler and ends up like getting her trust by uh, like sitting beside her bed one night when she's like scared of storms. Um, and so he's been like with her this whole time, but like trying to manipulate her. So he's the only one that can be around her and take care of her. Like going as far as to like threaten Samugi and she's like, oh yeah, yeah, he threatened me, but I didn't care. Like, what's he gonna do to me? weird gothic lolita gal <laughs> and um and no like, hands he, basically uh noah's like yeah he also made a threat to me about like revealing that i date all these guys and i was like 
bro, do it. I don't care. Whatever. Um, and she's like, what do you mean he's threatening all these people that are around me? Like, what is going on? Um, so that's bad. And, um, so he ends up like running off when they confront him with all of this information. And he sends her a text message. It's like, on Christmas Eve, I'm coming for you and we're going to leave. And her being stupid 17 year old's like, I'm not going to tell anybody about this. Like, I'm going to have a conversation with him. We're going to figure this out. Uh huh. So, uh, Christmas Eve comes and he kidnaps her. Wow, I'm shocked. I know, I know. And she's like, yes, we're going to have a conversation. Oh, no, I'm kidnapped. What is happening? And he's like, no, no, we have to we have to get away. We have to be by ourselves. Like, I'm the only one who can take care of you. And they end up, you know, running off again. Nayata's following them because he's the bodyguard, you know? <laughs> um, and she falls and like this is where she has her like memories come back of like oh god this is what happened to me and he kind of panics because he goes back into the whole like this is what happened back then is that she fell and i couldn't help her and uh naita ends up like tackling him <laughs> and um they take him back to the house and tie him to a chair and she's like i don't think that's necessary they're like no no this is necessary it's fine <laughs> Um, so, so yeah, they've got her just tied to a chair. <laughs> um, so that they can have the whole like conversation of, yes, he's been doing all of this manipulation. Um, he is her older brother and he's completely obsessed with her. She's like, oh, you know, the whole like sister complex thing and, and didn't really think that was real. Oh no, no. Um, so this ends up being a thing where like they agree that he can continue being her butler for some reason <laughs> um but that once a month he has to go on a quote-unquote date with her as her brother uh, and i forget what his actual name is but he has he has a name that's not that um starts with a t anyway it doesn't matter he sucks um so they they have these like brother sister like date days that are very much not hanging out with your brother type dates very much not like that and um like she mentions a few times like Ah, oh, yeah, you know, this this isn't like a regular brother sister relationship. I'm like, Ugh! Ugh! um, she like gets jealous if he talks to other women and like freaks out and drags him off and Ugh. bad times all around. Yeah, it's real gross, and like it ends with a CG of them like all like cuddled up together and like. Ugh! So, um, this game went downhill real bad. <laughs> real fast, real bad. Yeah, yeah, like, you know, the first three rounds, well, Xion's had some real bad things there, too, and, like, now it says I can look past the whole stepping on thing. Um, I can't look past the whole I'm going to make her cry. That's messed up. But, like, Taiga's fine. Tiger has there's two okay routes here. Yeah. And the rest of them are just disasters. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, well, the art's pretty. Yeah. 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 There are some really funny lines in this game. Like some really, really funny lines. But yeah. I was like, ooh, there are a lot of misses here in terms of romance. And like that, that brother route is no absolutely not i'm not into that um anytime there is a brother route in an atome i'm just like why are we doing this you're just like i'm out please please eject me from this simulation basically like 
I have an older brother. No. What are they thinking? Ugh, so, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well. That's variable barricade. That is variable barricade, and now it's time to rank it. <laughs> yep. You know, I'm thinking uh, we could we could probably just start at the top because I think it's going to be easily in that top echelon of games. Clearly, mm. <laughs> no. Let's let's start at the bottom because uh, I don't know how high we're going to be going up this this list. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> is it better than the KFC game? I do think it's better than the KFC game. Is it better than Amnesia? I do think it's better than Amnesia. Did you even complete Amnesia? Nope. Okay. Is it better than Hakuoki, another game you didn't complete? I did not complete it. Uh, I, I, we'll say it's better than that. Is it better than Love Letter from Thief X, another game you didn't complete? It's better than that. What if Turbo was in this? Oh, God. If Turbo was in this, it'd be even worse. <laughs> Is it better than Mr. Love? Is it better than Mr. Love? I Does it even it. crack the top 20? <laughs> I'm still mad at Mr. Love, so I can't decide if it's better than that. Uh, I'll say it's better than that. Is it better than Joe Starstruck? I'll say it's better than that. Is it better than Psychedelica of the Ashen Hawk? No. All right. <laughs> That's a pretty low game. Woof. 19 out of 25 games. Yikes. It's a top 20 top 20 Otome game though. It is top 20. Um I will say though like it's not really saying much though. It's not. This game was really talked up quite a bit. It's like this is a really exciting game. Everybody's real hype about this Otome. So I was really excited about it. Oh boy. This one made Cupid Parasite look like a <laughs> dream. You're like two out of three now on games that have been very hyped from the Atome community, and you just coming out of them and being like, what? Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. Excuse me? I, oof. And they're, they're, like, they're pretty near each other on this list, so. They are, and like, it's weird because, um, like, Dairoku and um, Olympia Soiree were games that were, like, not as hype. Right. And, like, look at where they are. They're up there. Top ten they're games. Top 10 games. So maybe I just need to stop paying attention to what people are excited about and look for the things that people are not excited about and be like, yeah, I'm excited for these. Well, then th that also leaves you to stuff like Love Letter from Thief X. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> take the good with the bad. <laughs> no. Um, there, there, There's a slew of new games coming out um, at some point this year, maybe. Um, I have them pre-ordered, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, uh, this one made some real bad choices. Well, congratulations on your your current game of the year, Variable Barricade. Yo, I've played like two games that come out this year. One's Variable Barricade, and I've played like a few hours Stranger of Paradise. That one already <laughs> beats it. Well, I guess before you had played the demo of Stranger of Paradise, this was your game of the year. <laughs> I don't even think it would have been my game of the year, even though it was the only game I played that came out this year. I had one game that qualified. It did not make the list. Basically, yes. Uh, well, that's <laughs> this week's edition of Al talking about Otome, and it was a mess. So It was a mess. We're going to wipe our hands of that one. It's real bad when the guy who wants to be stepped on in a dog suit looks like a dream compared to other ones yep real bad yep but yeah taiga is legit like the best character here like in every single route because he's the only one that has any sort of brain whatsoever and is like somewhat of a nice dude there you go the real one taiga good job buddy sorry you got put in this terrible game with beautiful art. Beautiful eyes. <laughs> well, that's 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 going to do it for this episode. 
Yeah, yeah, let's let's get out of here. Forget this game existed. Please. Uh, so if you'd like more from us, head on over to seasonalanimecheckup.com or sac.cools where you can find past episodes of this podcast and other podcasts like Jared Now Watch. You can also find columns and reviews on the site as well. If you'd like more from Anladium, go to anladium.com. She's got columns and reviews. You can follow us on Twitter and TikTok at Anime Checkup. You can buy our books, One Shiny Moment, a critical analysis of Love Life, Sunshine, and Hot Tubs and Pac-Man on Amazon.com. And you can support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash S-A-C-O-V-A. Buy us a slice of pizza, get access to unedited versions of the podcast early, and a whole wealth of bonus content as well. Next Yay. week. It's the end of March, but, you know, that doesn't mean it's not time for some madness. Oh, we haven't done March Madness yet. No. Oh, snap. We got one league to do it, so... All right, let's do it. We'll be doing that next week on what topic? We'll, we'll figure that out. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll, you'll find out eventually. Yeah. <laughs>